Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Chantel. Oh, and we are here to talk about Survivor 46, cast astrology and tarot. Sarah, we're back. We're back. We are here, but we are extra special this season. We're both very, very excited for our special guest to join us. But first, if you're new to this channel, please click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. If you do not know, Chantel and I love to go through the astrology of the Survivor cast every season, uh, talk about it, break it down, but you guys, we have a new Survivor astrology lady. Mm -hmm. So we are so excited to have Kendra joining us this season. Yay! I am in Hawaii um, now. In Hawaii. Hi. Um, I am so excited. I remember when our cast was getting rolled out and I found y'all's podcast. I was like, this exists. This is crazy. And so I'm just so grateful to be here with y'all. And I'm so excited for season 46. And I'm so excited to do the astrological um, assessment yeah. here with you ladies today. Uh yeah, this is fun. This is quite the dream team. Very, very excited about this. Uh, since this is like your survivor season, like the first one off of your season, how are you feeling? I know it's a little different. It is so different. And I think I'm more excited for to watch this season than I have been to watch like any other season because you really do just I, I anticipate that I'm going to see the game very differently. I'm going to read the players very differently. And it's like almost like this whole new experience in which to watch the game after having played it myself. So I'm just super excited. And like, I'm excited that people aren't really like talking about me anymore. So, yeah, we can talk about they're other only, people. It'll be great. <laughs> yo, they're only talking about you in the most positive way because they love you. Yeah. And now that the season's over, it's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People can stop complaining about little stuff. Well, uh, let's dive right in. I uh, I have it divided by tribes Ooh. and um, I have visuals. Oh, I love Let it. Me yeah. See if we can make this work. Um, we're gonna start with the Nami tribe and let me know if I'm pronouncing anything wrong, but uh, the Nami tribe is orange. We have a couple Pisces, we have a Libra, we have an Aries, a, a Taurus, and we have one person on here that we do not know yet, but let's dive in. How am I managing this? Okay, let's start with Hunter. He's from Mississippi, he's a science teacher, he is a Pisces, Sun and Mars, Taurus Moon, Aquarius, Mercury, Aries, Venus. Wait, is that what I wrote down? Yes. Okay, great. And I think his birthday was yesterday. So yes. <laughs> birthday. Yes. All right. I mean, we were saying before we started that we've got more Pisces, I think, than we usually have. This is going to be maybe emotional i think it's going to be very emotional <laughs> i'm seeing pisces we got libras we got a couple scorpios in the mix um and yeah two earth signs we have a capricorn and a taurus um so i think it's going to be a lot and we got two aries yeah there's there's a lot of uh intensity and emotion on this cast for sure well, he might be maybe a little bit of like a dreamer, you know, mm -hmm. he might idealize things. So maybe he's, he might be getting real information, but just like, no, 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 that's not really what's happening. They're not trying to vote me out of the tribe. Like he might romanticize the things that are going on with the social dynamics there and maybe not see them fully for what is actually going on because he wants to have, you know, whatever his experience he's kind of concocted in his imagination. Maybe. Yeah. I do see that Taurus moon though, as like a very like rooted in um, like information, rooted in logic, rooted in like what's in front of him. So I feel like if he, like as a Pisces, he is maybe naturally gonna lead with his emotions. 
So tuning in with that Taurus moon and staying grounded and being like, okay, because Taurus moons, at least in my experience, especially men with Taurus moons, they're very practical, very grounded, like logic, like reason. And so I can definitely see that really helping kind of tone down that Pisces, Piscean energy because yeah, he has his Mars and Pisces too. So is he going to be wishy-washy with his decision-making? Like, is that going to come up at all? Very Probably. possible. <laughs> Although he does have that fixed moon and Mercury. So uh, the fun side would be like a little delusional and stuck in his ways. Um, yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> but he also might be, you know, the, you know, Pisces going two different ways. He could go with the flow. And with that Taurus moon, maybe he's going to be the person that wants to have a comfortable shelter. So oh, maybe wow. he's going to look to make their surroundings be really, really cozy. And, you know, the, the, their sleeping quarters are going to be really comfortable. And he's going to be focused maybe on that element just to have those creature comforts to keep him secure. And so that could be something that he focuses on. Um, and maybe while other people are like, well, we want to strategize. He's like, well, I want uh -huh. it to be comfy here. I yeah, mean, the caretaker, like Pisces Taurus, I could definitely see like a caretaking role. Shelter is going to be on point with him. And then the Mercury Aquarius, like I see him actually like that position as like a really good, like able to communicate their like thoughts and feelings like strategically, you know what I mean? Being able to remove emotion. So I do see that as like a really beneficial placement for him with the Piscean and um, in working with that Taurus moon almost. Cause even though they are like square to each other naturally, that is going to, I think, give him like the ability to detach his emotions potentially to be able exactly. to like make the strategic move that that Aquarius Mercury wants to make and like make alliances, make people feel comfortable without like Taurus moon, like relatability. Do, do we know if he's single? Because I'm wondering with that, that Venus and Aries, if like he's going to want to take some action towards some, some romantic elements in this uh, dynamic of this tribe. I Don't love that idea. <laughs> single, but there is an Aries on uh, right? the tribe. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't so know maybe... what Venus is. Come on and now. We don't, we don't know what one of the other tribe members is, but they might at least be drawn to each other to work together. If nothing yeah. else, they'll enjoy each other's company. Um, all right, we're going to pull a card. Uh, Kendra, did you want to pull a card or do you want to just say? or? Just I mean, I have my deck with me. Yeah, we can. Right. But yeah, let's just give them a little. What kind little of deck are you time. using? Um, I just oh, have yeah, a traditional sure. Rider Waite deck, but I also, also do have my Kim Kranz archetype deck, which could be fun. Oh, um, but I don't have to look for the book. I'm still to. learning that deck, so I still have to like kind of look at the book and read into it. So, Hunter, oh, Hunter, boy. Hunter. Starting us off, I've got a hermit for him. Ooh, and I think he is like a science teacher, right? Yes. So I love yeah. the hermit for a science teacher, like that's just like that, like studious and like really intellectual like and being a Pisces like that self journey so this could be really a really big internal journey for him it makes me think of his Taurus moon though too like maybe he will just want to like cozy up in the shelter <laughs> what you got King of Wands, Mar uh, Venus and Aries what up <laughs> wow and I got and I believe this is the night of, of wands Oh, fire Ooh. energy coming for Fiery. this person. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Ooh, it gives me chills. I'm like Hunter with the orange <laughs> tribe and the and the, all the fire energy. Maybe um he's gonna end up being a little bit more fiery than we <laughs> than we think. <laughs> Yeah, well, with if, maybe if he's going to maybe connect with that other Aries or with Venus, if when we find out her sign, like maybe that is going to come through because, you know, a Knight of Wands, they like to charge forward. They like to take action. They like to get things done. And so that's that's a maybe he's going to be like the leader of this tribe or he's going to be the person that kind of set things in motion. So maybe you have these idealistic dreamer ideas, but he might be able to actualize them and like put them into forward motion. That's oh, yeah. exactly yeah. what I was kind of picking up on with the King of Wands here, Knight of Wands, and even the Hermit. Like, 
I can really see him being like this force that moves the tribe forward. Definitely leadership abilities. Even if he doesn't necessarily like mean to be a leader, I think he naturally has this like maybe charisma about him that is going to get him further in the game through use of that. But like also being careful because like people are going to see him as a leader. People are going to perceive him as like a go-getter. Um, and so I think that is like a thing of caution. That's good, but like everything in balance. Definitely yeah. excited for seeing how this one's going to play out um, because it's very specific and like you'll, you'll be able to tell like if these cards really actualize. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Also on this tribe, another Pisces. This is Liz. Liz. She is 35, a marketing strategist in Orlando, originally from Michigan. Pisces sun. Her moon is either Scorpio or Sagittarius. Okay. She's got an Aries, Mercury, and Mars. And a Aquarius. Uh, her Venus is Aquarius. Um, with I mean, Liz, uh, when I was kind of... Excited. She just was familiar to me, and I realized, like, I have some of her emails. Like, I, I, I get them on her email list, which is funny that she's, like, an email strategist or whatever. And so... What is she marketing to you? Um, I, I don't know if I've ever, like, actually gone into death, but I just... I remember I just... I, I'm like, what's her, her name? I put her name in, and I saw, like, emails that, like, I didn't oh open from her. Oh. But, like, I definitely... Something that she did made me sign up to one of her email lists. You are so connected to almost everybody. Oh, that's true. <laughs> is she going to win? <laughs> Yeah. What? Or come in like close to first. Chantel gets emails from contestants. I don't. I don't get. That is a wild. I love that. I just was like, her name's so really Liz Worth. I know that name. That is so um, funny. A Scorpio and a Sagittarius moon are very different. We might be able to tell that once we get to know yeah. her. Absolutely. Um, I'm loving this combo though. Like I, I guess like watching her like preseason interviews, she definitely I was like Pisces, but like all that fire. I'm like, she is a firecracker. She is definitely gonna like wanna like forge her own path in this game, I can kind of see. Um, just like that Aquarius Venus, all that Aries energy, especially if she is a Sag Moon. That's just gonna be like, all right, we're gonna hit the ground running, we're gonna figure it out on the way. Um, and I love that. I think that's like a really good mindset to come into Survivor with because you're able to adapt, which that Pisces sun is gonna wanna do. It's gonna wanna, you know, blend in and camouflage and, oh, I can be this person for these people. I can be this person over here. So really, really love and live. And I believe she's a super fan, which is fun. Okay. And so I feel yeah. like that super fan is going to actualize in that Mars and Aries. Like Definitely. she's going to want to snatch this opportunity and really experience all that she can experience. Like she's just going to mm -hmm. want to charge forward with like, I'm on Survivor. Like this is awesome. And she's going to, if she, especially if she's the Sagittarius moon, she's going to want to just like really have all the experience and feel the culture and feel the island and feel the the other people that she's meeting different cultures and backgrounds like i think she's, she's really going to soak up this experience and so i'm excited to watch her play she's i think on the draft i did i think she was my number one draft pick so i was like I'm Ooh, i love it <laughs> i do love an aries mars on any of these shows because they're yeah. so competitive and they're just so willing to just dive into every challenge whatever needs to happen it's very fun to watch Definitely. Yay. All right, Liz, what you got for us here? Liz, Liz, Liz. Ooh, I have a high priestess. Ooh. Listen to your gut, Liz. Liz. Listen to your gut. You got the high priestess from us, right, Kendra? Did I? Oh, did I, I think it did too. I, I think I, you did. When, I, think, I think it was Sarah's card, maybe? I, I, I remember that because I was like, that is one of my favorite cards so I, yes. I, I think i remember being like oh i mean it's such a i mean it does fit well with a pisces energy if she's just like let's tune in guys that would yes. be beautiful uh oh wait how many wands do you or that's eight wands? eight of wands is we great. got an eight of okay. wands okay, good. that's 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 a mars and aries for sure that's, right i was literally about to say Hello, Mars and Aries. Hello, <laughs> Moon and Sag. Let's get it done. Like, yeah. this is what, like, I'm like, okay, she's just gonna, huh. 
Send it. Um, Full send from Liz. Go for it. 100%. Go for it. And then I also got the hermit for her now. Ooh. Ooh so, I wonder if Hunter going to have some sort of, I don't, I feel like, she, is she married? I think she's married. But um, I feel like maybe they're going to, they worked well together or something like that. Like maybe they're going to be able to think about things together and kind of, you know, they're both Pisces and they both get the hermit card. So introspective yeah. and maybe work through plans and ideas together and then charge forward and go for it. So I would, is this a secret duo that we're seeing happening before our eyes? I couldn't agree more, especially with Hunter's Mercury and her Venus. Um, Mercury in Aquarius and her Venus in Aquarius. I'm like, I love that combo because it's like she's going to share kind of like her values. Maybe they're going to have like bond over like same humanitarian like values or ideals and then just kind of like latch on to each other like through this like Piscean internal journey and like be like, okay, like let's make this line up and like let's forge a path together because yeah, I'm living they're like both hermit, both got the hermit card. Oh, so interesting. And then eight of wands. I mean, shoot your shot, baby. Like, I love this card for Liz. And this yeah. was a, as a child, a daughter, correct? And then it was yes. a daughter that um, kind of dared her to submit to um, to play, like correct? And yeah. so I'm wondering if he, she starts talking about her, her daughter and like he works with children. And so like they might have that bond there. Um, uh, do you not agree, Sarah? No, no, yeah. I'm, oh, okay. I thought you're just I'm like taking well, it in. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just um, so shocked I'm that we might have two. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm shocked that we might have two Pisces like running a tribe. Like this is fun. <laughs> but also, I would have not. I think it's so interesting that there's so many Pisces this season because Saturn is in Pisces right now. And there's like four people on this cast going through their Saturn return or like completing their Saturn return right now. So wow, it's like all that Piscean energy, especially for a TV, like, oh, I feel like this is gonna this season's gonna be like gifting us all of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all of that goodness. Going uh, on one of these shows during your Saturn return is actually pretty common. Like, yep. I guess it's it one sense. of just the biggest life-changing things you could do is go on one of these shows. Check I out. do love that. All right, Randon, going to give us a little uh, – this is the most fun thing, you guys. I've never run a chart for one of these shows where his son could be one or the other. He – the son oh, wow. moved – uh on his birthday so oh, it was wow. in virgo until about 5 a.m his eastern time um and then it went into libra so we're gonna have to find out if he is a virgo or a libra i'm on it <laughs> 5 a.m i would yeah. say he's probably a libra well you know what i mean like baby 90 of, of people night. are usually born after 5 a.m but you know Obviously. 90 I, percent. Not 90, but I'm a high percent. <laughs> I think he's a Libra because he's very like reminiscent of a Libra man to me. Like he looks mm. like a Libra man. But he also has Mercury in Libra and like who knows what his mm. rising is. But like I'm getting Libra. Right. Yeah. He, he, he does vibe Venus. Libra to me, um for sure. Mm -hmm. His uh, moon is Sagittarius, as is his Mars. Mm, love it. Uh <laughs> Libra Mercury and Virgo Venus. Ooh. Mm. So oh, well, maybe, maybe it's kind of Virgo. No, I no, I see his eyes to me say say Venus. Yeah, he's, he's the eyes and the smile. It's like Venus, yeah. very Venusian. Um, mm -hmm. Mars and Sag, Moon and Sag. Love that, Brandon. <laughs> if you're watching, I know you oh! already fell. <laughs> but this. Sometimes need a. <laughs> Wait, I can't tell. Is, is Kendra, are you falling in love? What's happening right now? No, no, I'm oh. saying like I'm afraid that he's gonna like be very blunt, maybe, oh, or like God. say some jokes that he like be like ah, like, and then some people maybe be like mm, I don't know because just all that oh, sad energy. I mean, he does have a, a Mercury in Libra, so that's usually kind of like I also have a Mercury in Libra in the ninth house, and this never stops. So, um, <laughs> I just worry for him that 
not worry, but like I could see him very, being very like talkative, very um, people are kind of like drawn to him, really want to chat with him. But, but maybe it's like, OK, the secrets need to stay secret, you know, like. 100 percent. Whenever air is combined with Sagittarius, uh, the chattiness becomes dangerously blunt. And yeah, yeah. Um, that's like Izzy from Big Brother. It's like you uh, you just say it. It's a little word vomity. But I'm entertained by that. It does not always work with your tribe mates. Yes, exactly. But the Venus in Virgo, I love that. Um, I see him like the people he does get close with, like actually close with, like that Venus in Virgo, I see that as like a, I show love through like acts of service. They're like really wanting to like be in alliance and like show up. It's like, okay, I'm not going to just say it. I'm going to show it. So I love that mm -hmm. Venus Virgo placement of like showing like that you care, showing that you value this person through action, not just words. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a nice little grounding placement with all that fire and air. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how blunt he might be. Um, I love having that fire energy that just speaks their mind. Um, oh, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't rub anybody the wrong way because we do have a couple of Pisces that we've spoken about. Maybe mm -hmm. they will they could be sensitive to yeah. maybe some bold um, speaking and maybe directives. Um, but I think that if he nestles in and like people really like and respect him, um, I think that he might be able to get away with it. But he might be walking on eggshells a little bit um, in the beginning because he might be a little bit too bold. Yeah, hopefully they like catch his vibe but like I could just see him like thinking like something's really funny like like a funny joke or a really blunt joke and people just being like the Pisces being like no that wasn't <laughs> funny yeah <laughs> and he's also a little bit older so far than um everybody yeah he's, you yeah, know, he's good... 41 hmm. yeah he so, is going to stand but... out a little bit he seems super well, sweet Ooh. oh the fool, the fool? Got a fool. Yep. it's good I mean, that could that could definitely be like Sagittarius. Uh, I mean, our most recent Sag energy was Sifu, and then before him was Cody from Hawaii, living, living tattoo. So, yeah. um, you know. And he maybe, was a Sag, so that Sag energy worked for him. I'm feeling, I'm feeling that, yeah. Ooh. We got okay, the three of pentacles, which I love for an alliance. Like, yeah. I can really see him, like like I said, the Virgo, like that Venus Virgo. It's like, I'm going to show you through my actions that, like, I am here for this alliance. So I'm really hoping that, like, people see him as an equal or that he sees other people that he's working with as equals. And they can kind of, like, be like, okay, this is practical. These are the steps we need to take to, like, move forward. And, like, being in a different alliance where, like, you're really listening or him maybe even craving that or, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's what I'm seeing through this. So just get, you getting good social bond. Yeah. Three Did you say three? Yeah. Okay. That's the, things coming together, building something that has a foundation. So yeah. um, that For definitely, merge. Was, definitely get, he's getting far into the game, I would say. I think he gets to yeah. merge for sure. Um, and then also, this is the Ten of Swords. Um, tens are in general, they're like new beginnings, but with lessons learned. So even yeah. though this is not like the prettiest of cards, it kind of seems that you kind of have to leave something behind to start making uh, steps forwards into a new direction. I think that this is positive. So this could maybe be a tribe swap where it's like, you know, maybe that <laughs> trio that he forms, he's going to have to leave that behind and going to have to take new directions in, uh, in a new way. And so... This to me says maybe getting to emerge or a swap if there's a swap this season. Um, and he, he lasts a, a while into the game, I would say. I think he gets to the halfway point. Merge. I think so too, Whoa. especially with this foundation. You don't? No. You don't know. I mean, maybe if we if we pair the Ten of Swords with the Fool, like maybe he gets an opportunity to start over on a new mm. tribe or a new beach, but. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Three of Pentacles makes me feel like he goes on a journey, gets some sort of journey. advantage, and okay. then the Ten of Swords like takes mm. him out. But ten is I not a one. Of... A what? I'm sorry. Ten is not a one. It's not an ace. 
And so it seems like there is a distance that's been kind of, he, he's experienced. So it's like, it doesn't say, it doesn't say going out early to me. And like, for me with the three, like the fool, yeah, the fool, I could see that being a first boot type card, but it also is a card that's like taking a leap of faith and going on an adventure and kind of stepping off the cliff and not knowing if you're going to get caught. And so it, it does say journey. So maybe he does go on a journey. Maybe yeah. it ends up being a swap. Um, yeah. Maybe he's going to have to leave his alliance, but it doesn't say like first mm -hmm. boot or anything to me. No, I mean, a major Arcana fool is not first boot for sure. I would. Uh, he's gonna have a journey though for sure <laughs> emotional physical something <laughs> um here's soda our aries she is an aries sun mercury and mars she is more than likely a libra moon it did go into scorpio at like 11 p.m that night um and her venus is gemini so she might get into Randon. She might feel the air energy. Um, all that fire. Boy, boy, boy. She's definitely oh. gonna charge forward. Hopefully she's gonna be able to connect. It was it was Liz that had a lot of other both Liz and Hunter had a lot of fire, correct? Mm-hmm. So like yeah. maybe she's gonna be able to work with them with that fire energy. Um curious though about her son being a little bit different from the other two, so yeah. Um, just because like, yeah. this might just be there. They might come approach things a little bit more soft and she might be a little bit more direct. And I just don't know if that will mix in the beginning. Aries go hard. Sure. Aries go hard. I see in. this as like a big personality for sure. Um, and, and yeah, just like that directness and like, I guess we'll have to see if like the Pisces are like, and even the Libra are a little like taken back maybe by the directness. Cause like Libra can go either way. It just depends on the day for us. Really. It, so like it might be triggered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, so we got Aries, Aries, Libra. Oh, so much Aries. Yeah. Direct to the point. But like, I feel like this could be really good for this tribe. Like a lot of fire under their asses to like get shit done. And yeah. I like that. I like that. But also burnout. It's like, are we, are they going to get like burnt out with like all the, oh, uh, like all that fi like fire energy that's under the surface for a lot of them. And she's kind of going to ignite all that up for the other placements in those people. Cause we got a heavy fire tribe here. Yeah. yeah heavy fire tribe. So hopefully that's really good for challenges. Challenges. Right? Like, agree. Challenges. Yep. Definitely you need fire, need people that are just going to go, go, go. And so yep. it seems like they have quite a bit of that energy. So is this going to be the the Comp Beast tribe? Right? Might be. I really hope the little bit of air that she has going on does, like, make her kind of stop and think a little bit first. Yeah. Um, because that's the only, I mean, we love an Aries in a competition show because they are going to go for it, but they don't always consider all of their options. They don't always think before they leap. Um, so yeah. hopefully she does have a little balance there where she considers before she jumps. But, but not a lot of, no water here necessarily. No. So I don't know if she'll be empathetic or sympathetic you yeah, know what right. I mean, to everybody else around her. So that Especially might not with, go well two Pisces on her, her the side. Venus Gemini great talker though mm -hmm. like I could see her making like really good social bonds here especially with that Libra moon it's like you're just gonna people are gonna feel that like friendly energy I think as long as it's like you know tamper like that Libra moon I feel like can tamper with the the way in which that like Aries Mercury can come off like that directness so maybe soften it a little bit um with those Venusian <laughs> energies, but all oh, right, right, soda. Um, I've got oh, the Oh, that oh, is energy. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I don't, I am using a full deck and I am only pulling. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Wow. This is, this is a, an interesting tribe if we're getting Major Arcana. I got a good one too. What, what do you have, Kendra? I have the Six of Cups. Aw, memories. Ooh, which I really love job. for Soda because she works with kids, right? Yeah, remember. she's a special ed teacher. She's a special ed teacher. So, you know, the lack of water in the chart, I think, 
she is is gonna like pull into this reservoir of like her childhood memories her reason for being there like really tapping into that well and like sharing that emotions with others like just being very very vulnerable being very open and like letting this adventure spark her up and like connect with people like this is what that card it gives me chills like i love the card for soda and what do you have I have the king, the the king of um, wands, yeah. And so, king of wands, emperor, and then like the nostalgia card, like that's like a seemingly a winning combo. Like, Ooh, I literally <laughs> have chills. Soda, right? we're ready for you, babe. <laughs> like, tapping into, like you said, her childhood, what she's playing for, why she's here, why she has so much drive, and then being having the king of of. of of wants here it's like she's going to be able to maybe send people out to help her achieve this goal and then the emperor i consider that to be the biggest money card of the deck and so that feels to me that she could stand strong at the end and be the sole survivor i think this is a very very positive trio of cards for soda i think people are going to feel really connected to soda because she's going to like be able to bring out that like nostalgia those feelings like and share them she, I mean, we, we don't know her rising. She could be a water rising for all we know. But so mm -hmm. Hunter is the Pisces with Aries Venus that I was wondering if he'd connect with her as the Ooh. Aries sun. But he got a king of wands as well. They're both got a king of wands. So wow. let's keep an eye on the two of them. Yeah, we're having a lot of crossovers here. I love it. Okay, Tevin. He is uh, a 24 years old, an actor from Virginia, a Taurus with a Leo or Virgo moon. His Mercury is in Aries, Venus in Gemini, Mars in Scorpio. And with his hair, I would likely say that's a Leo moon. Leo moon. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. I was like, that's Leo Moon. <laughs> it absolutely. We have a lot of el different elements here other than just like mm -hmm. the fire that we've been seeing. We still got a little bit of fire. That Scorpio Mars. Ooh, do not cross. Tevin. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, we we noticed that the title for the second episode is Scorpio Energy, which like first off, hello, thank you for titling any episode about astrology. Uh, but my gosh, like so, somebody somewhere is giving Scorpio energy, and it could very easily be someone with a Scorpio Mars. Mm -hmm. um, do not cross Tevin for sure. Yeah, fixed Taurus. I mean, I love watching a Taurus on these shows because they have to pivot they have to yep. step outside of that that i set a plan and it will forever be this plan so we'll see how What's that also works fun about Taurus on these shows is how much they love the food award rewards mm. like they're just like you can see them like licking their lips and they're just so excited to like eat that croissant like there's <laughs> so i want to see his tourists has come out with obviously comforting things so if they win a reward it's where they get blankets and pillows and stuff like that or if it's like some delicious food that they get to indulge in so i do get love Kevin a, a reward <laughs> <laughs> i love yes. that um yeah and he's mercury Ooh, that leo moon so excited I like can't wait to see just like that passion come out and just like that excitement. Uh, I think this tribe is going to be really dynamic. Like, oh. yeah, Ar Aries Mercury going to be very comfortable putting him and his plan first. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Leo Moon is fixed as well. Oh, boy. I am concerned yeah. about <laughs> a lot of fixed energy. I know. I'm like, <laughs> No, I can't. I, I, I think this is a dynamic. Dynamic. The dynamic of this oh tribe God. is going to be very interesting to watch. I don't know how the other tribes are going to kind of stack up, but um, so far, I'm very interested in seeing how everybody works together here. Right. Another Same. major card: the Hanged oh. Man. Wow. Oh, you've got to adjust. Oh my goodness. Especially for this thick. Yeah, 
he's gonna have to learn to let something go, a pivot. There, there's definitely oh boy. an issue there. Oh, do you have the full? Oh boy. I'm nervous with this. I'm nervous that he's gonna like maybe be in an opportunity to change his mind or change something up yeah. and like not take the risk that he needs to or not change his perspective that he needs to um i love the fool card this is like my favorite card of all time but seeing your hanged man and what do you have the two of pentacles yeah i see him like deciding between something like sticking to what he wants or what he knows rather than taking a risk or changing something up but the full card is also like that excitement energy beginning this new adventure um you know looking look into the sky and looking at the following a butterfly while walking up off a cliff like it's so <laughs> it's such pure energy and i love it it's, i think it's a great card to pull for survivor um i was pulling this card a lot for myself while gearing up for the process um, but the hanged man is really just being able to switch the perspective. The fool was kind of telling me is like, oh, maybe it wasn't in time. Maybe he wasn't able to switch his perspective in time and is falling towards like, yeah, maybe, maybe a boot because of that or having people turn on him or, you know, whatever it is. But yeah. Even the card, kind of his picture here looks similar. Like he, it could be yeah. him posing as like his version of the fool card. Um, yeah. Very similar um, setup here. So yeah, I got the two of pentacles, and that's usually balancing an idea or a thought or getting you know trying to having two perspectives and two thoughts and weighing his options out. So this could be a journey because we kind of were talking about the fool being a journey. So maybe he does get the opportunity to go on a journey. I feel like it might be earlier on in the season. So maybe. Maybe on the first episode, I think it's two one hour episodes. So one of the first two episodes, maybe he does go on sweat and savvy journey if they do something like that this season. Um, and maybe he's going to need to get that new perspective of the hangman. And I'm not sure with his fixed energy, if he's going to be willing to adapt and maybe see things from a new perspective. So I love these cards for him, but I am slightly worried that he might not take that new perspective, which could put yeah. him in a little bit of danger. Yep. Right. But I do feel like if he can, if he can, he I can think he can do ooh. it then the fool says you you have a whole new journey to go on i do feel Absolutely. like he just has to figure that out Ooh, yep. interesting so interesting i love that all right this is um, so fun every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, don't read any of this because I meant to delete all of this. Uh, this is someone else's chart because this is Venus. She's the last member of this Nami tribe. Um, mm -hmm. And we do not have her birthday. She's the only person we don't have. But she's from Toronto, Chantel. Uh, I don't Canadian. know her as of yet. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, maybe once we get more information about her, I'll be like, oh, actually, you know, her friend is my friend's ex-boyfriend's sister. So probably, and we went to yeah. the same school or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, she's a data analyst from Toronto. Let's still pull a card from her and hopefully we'll eventually get her birthday. I mean, my goodness, she's gorgeous. She's stunning. How old is she? I'm like, she is Venus a Taurus? Is she named after her? Planetary she, ruler? Yeah, right? She's giving <laughs> Venus. She is giving Venus. I'm like, you know, I've been looking at that picture trying to just figure out <laughs> what her sign is. I think I'm like, I, I mean, she could definitely be a Libra as well. I um, think Taurus, Libra, Scorpio, or Capricorn. Yeah, I feel like there's a little earth in there. Like there's Me something too. grounded behind her eyes. Um, I guess we're rising, only one way to find out. Rising earth. Let's For her to tell us. Yes, yes please. Yeah. Please. Venus. Ooh, another high okay, let's do our Hmm. She wants Who to be the first the Courage and winner. Liz. Uh, sh I've got a high priestess for her, and the other high priestess on this tribe was Liz. Um, maybe they do a... Ooh, the sun and a high priestess. Oh, wow. Yes. Right? Oh, whoa, whoa, Giving. 
you know, it was funny when I pulled this card, I was thinking about kind of like that audition video that they, the clip of the audition video that they showed her, um, where she's like, I want to be the first like Persian woman winner of Survivor and the sun coming up here, even though, ah, oh, love the sun card, naked baby on a horse, just like <laughs> doing your thing, soaking up life, like <laughs> where we all want to be, but really just like letting herself shine and letting herself be seen and like letting her reason for being there really shine out. I see this. And also it's like, this is a great card <laughs> to be pulled for, um, for a survivor. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, strength, um, fun, willpower. Um, well, everything I'm revolves that. around the sun right? Yeah. Uh, and that's very much winner energy, right? Mm -hmm. Like if everything yeah. is revolving around the whole season revolves around you. Um, yep. the, the sun, that's a very, very winner esque kind of card. Now, and this is interesting. This would make me think that she might be an air sign. Um, mm -hmm. I got the, um, eight of swords here. And so Ooh, that's usually oh. about, um, a lot of in, inner contemplation and thoughts and, and not really seeing what's going on outside of you but it's actually you're having a lot of thoughts inwardly so maybe she doesn't think that she's worthy of winning but she still could win but maybe she's mm -hmm. going to have some inner battles of maybe self-worth or like if she's capable of doing it or yeah. if she deserves to to have this winning thing like she maybe she goes on a journey inward to allow herself to accept really being the sole survivor here but you're the sun and a high priestess is very strong energy of being very successful and maybe the only thing that really may get in her way or something that she has to um, overcome would be some of her own inner thoughts and inner monologues. Yeah, Nailed it. something's going on in, in like the challenges is, the call is coming from within the house. Yeah, <laughs> the call is coming from within the house. But Interesting. I hope that this like experience just from like being on the other side of it, I hope that this experience, like whatever the eight of swords is, like leads way. Like regardless of where she places or what happens, like I hope this experience like leads way for her to tune into that high priestess and that sun energy. So like, you know, regardless of whatever, like I really do feel that for her and like, yeah. oh, it's like just being yourself in a different light. Well, and also with the Eight of Swords, um, you know, I was always told that she can she can get out of these these ropes that are tied around her. They're they're tied loosely, and the blindfold yeah. she could even yeah. take off the blindfold. And so realizing that she's actually not trapped or she's not bound, and that she actually can allow herself to be free and step into that winning role or that soul survivor role. Um, I, I feel that this is going to be a, maybe it's going to be a story about her. Maybe it's going to be her journey that we're going to be watching this season. I love them. These are, collectively, these are strong cards for a tribe. Mm -hmm. I feel like this tribe is not going to tribal every episode. No. Right? This yeah. one doesn't have uh, the, the yellow tribe from last season Lulu. energy. Lulu. It's not Lulu. Lulu. <laughs> yeah. Lulu, Lulu. Not a Lulu vibe. Absolutely oh not. Oh, my God. Takes us to... Siga, is that how we're pronouncing this? The Green Tribe. Oh, good to me. Um, we've got some fire, some earth, some air, and some water. Okay, we've got it all here. So let's start with Mr. Ben Katzman, 31 years old. He's a musician from Miami, Florida. He is an Aries Sun and Mercury. He's either a Sagittarius or Capricorn moon, Venus in Pisces, Mars in Aquarius. How old is he? 92. 31. Sorry, my eyes, I'm like squinting. I'm like on my phone screen. It's not super clear. <laughs> Pisces, Venus, Aquarius, Mars, Aries. Ooh. If he is a, a lot of fire, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, yeah, but Sag Moon is Sag Mooning. <laughs> I see Ben as just like, just like from watching some of his like preseason interviews, like that fire energy is so real. Um, and yeah, he says, he says Sag moved over Capricorn Moon in this photo anyway. Yeah. And the yeah. energies that I've got to vibe with him so far. That's true. That's true. 
Just saying. Yeah. It would be nice if he had a Capricorn moon uh, to balance out some of that fire. Uh, but if it's a Sag moon, that's a lot, a lot of fire. Um, and a, But a Pisces, a Mars. Wait, no. What do I have? Venus. Pisces, Venus, Aquarius, Mars. So he might be able to, like, strategically figure out a plan. My right? Mars is in Aquarius. Yeah. Yeah. I love a Mars and Aquarius. It it shows me that he's going to be able to like when it's time to go to tribal, he's going to be able to gather, like do the thing, gather the people, make the action happen, and um, really good at like bringing people together um, with that placement. Um, the Mars, like I think he, he might yeah be like, yeah okay let's get this okay this is what the plan is like he might be the person mm -hmm. with the plan. Yeah, exactly. The man with the plan, Ben Katzman. Um, He's going to want Mercury, to be the man with the plan. Or the want to be the man with the plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, depending on how fiery that Sag Moon yeah. is, or potential Sag Moon is, or all that Aries, it's like maybe people might not, at least yeah. in my experience, like when I let that Sag energy really out, it was like, I felt like maybe people didn't take me as seriously because I was just like having fun. And he seems like somebody who wants to just have fun and soak up the experience and do the thing. But like, and we want to be the ones with the plan, but like, who's receiving that? Which I yeah. do think that Aquarius Mars can really help bring people in because it is going to be so, this is what we're doing. This right. is the best, most logical plan. Oops. Uh, I mean, the Aries Mercury is going to definitely be like, but my plan first and the yes. plan that saves my butt first. <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. But with that Aquarius Mars, he's going to be strategically sound. So I agree. He, so maybe it might be for self, but I do think that he will make an effort to make it seem like it's good for everybody. You know? Yeah. I think the for self, I mean... I wish I had more of that. I don't think it's a bad thing in the game. You know what I mean? Um, but the Pisces Venus is so tender. I see him making real genuine connections out there um, because it's just so loving and like so, oh, like that is like a kumbaya placement. Um, and so I can definitely just see that maybe some people are it depends on the rest of his tribe i'm really interested to see the rest of this tribe to mm -hmm. kind of see how his energy plays out with everyone else because maybe yeah. maybe there are going to be a couple pisces a couple weavers who are able to see that softer side of him there uh, is yeah. a pisces on this tribe oh okay so Wait. Ooh, yeah okay. just igniting up that venusian energy Venus, so, the Pisces Venus. I do think, though, it, that it's going to allow people, like you're saying, to see, like, he's going to come, like, okay, Aries, Aries, Mars, Mars, all that, like, energy, fire energy. Yeah. But then, like, people will be surprised, potentially, pleasantly surprised, that he's mm -hmm. going to have a softer side, that maybe his values are a little bit more romantic and, and kind and, and magical. And, you know, I think that he's going to have, like, a side that people are not going to expect, maybe, because he comes forth as so, uh, you know, like, rock and roll, I 100% agree. Like, I really do see this, like, potential for people seeing that softer side and like when you're out there like yeah first impressions are big but like then you get to talking and then you get to talking about your values and that's when venus starts to show up and so they can really see that softer side of potentially coming out for so no major arcana here we've got an eight of pentacles right. for ben um the potential to really learn as he goes kind of try to master this game uh-oh what are we on here we got we got a five of swords okay all right Which um, makes, it's gonna be hard wow this is gonna be hard for him okay he's gonna be fighting for his life out there. <laughs> yeah. maybe he's gonna show the softer side a little bit too late when people might not like yeah it, or right. like oh he's only you know being this way because maybe he's in danger in the hot seat or something yeah five of swords it's like i feel like he maybe is not going to communicate kind of what he needs or what he needs from his people maybe he's going to feel left behind or maybe he's going to be leaving people behind in this mm -hmm. um 
Yeah. Inner conflict, outer conflict. I'm not really sure how this is going to show up. Um, ooh, five of swords with the, which one, what do you have? Nine of, so of ones. A so all of three yeah. of the swords um, traditionally is like one person kind of away from the group or away exactly. from the group. And so it yeah. seems like he may end up being sort of an outcast in some ways. So not being I able to. That's not the same. So it could be all that Aries energy, like he, it's maybe the first impression, like we've already mentioned, is going to rub people the wrong way. He might be kind of on the outs. Um, mm -hmm. The Eight of Pentacles is the, the apprentice card. So he's learning as he goes. But I don't know if, especially if they start in small tribes, if he's going to have enough time to get to show that Venus, Pisces and Venus. So yeah. Paired mm -hmm. with y'all's cards, it's more like maybe he doesn't quite see what he needs to learn. Yeah, I just totally, get that. totally. It's definitely going to be a journey yeah. for him. Um, ben, we're worried about you. Yeah, ben! badly bruised, not broken is what this card kind of means. So yeah. I, this is like it, it's he's going to feel alone, if, and hopefully he'll be able to make it through. But a little worrisome. Yeah, according to the cards, who knows? Right. <laughs> Um, stand by. I messed up my next. Um, <laughs> it's so funny when like I see all these cards. Like I literally am picturing the game of surf, like the actual game, and I'm like, oh, so this is what's going to end up happening, and like I'm picturing all these different scenarios. It's Same. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! When am I going to make a survivor deck? When are we going to make a survivor deck? Let's do it. Oh, That'd be we so need cool. It. We well, especially since from, from you were on the season, it's like Jeff like making reference to astrology and like people were pretty averse to, to astrology and even talking about it. And then we started talking about it and then he, you were bringing it up on the show and then he brings it up and now as an episode title about it. So I love that it's kind of- The impact. It's being embraced. The impact. I, yes. ah, like wow. an episode called Big Scorpio Energy now. It's just crazy. I'm just <laughs> over the moon about it. Anyways, we got Charlie here. Charlie's... I said it's like back to from Massachusetts. Charlie. Uh, yeah, Charlie from Massachusetts. He's 26. He's a law <laughs> student. He's a zero degree Capricorn, which is a special place in my heart. His son is on my ascendant. Oh. Uh, he's a Libra moon. This is also the makeup of my husband. I think I'm going to love Charlie. <laughs> yeah. As uh, a Sagittarius Mercury and his Mars and Venus are in Aquarius. Yeah. I mean, oh. I might be biased, but like, this is a great blend. I love Charlie. <laughs> I love yeah. this chart. Okay. I feel like we have a really good balance of energies here. Um, logical, practical, reasonable. Um, yeah. And then that Libra moon just, he looks just friendly and like easy to get along with. Yeah. Um, the I guess the, the downside is making a decision is sometimes tough. Um, yeah. He's going to definitely want to have a partner out there to help him with those decisions. Um, so we'll have to, oh, there is a Libra on his, uh, uh, tribe. Maybe that'll do it. We'll see, um, who he pairs up with. That's going to be important. Sag Mercury is fun. He might be entertaining <laughs> verbally. It might be fun. <laughs> uh, but the Capricorn and the, uh, might, might tone it down a little bit. And the um, Aquarius. I'm wondering, you know, if he, maybe he is going to connect with, um, what was that last name? Ben? Is it Ben? Ben. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they'll connect, but like he'll realize that Ben's kind of on an island and be like, okay, sorry, I gotta leave you. Like, I need He's to stay in this game. Like, I know yeah. we're like, on the same page, but like I'm being included in the plan. The plan's you. I'm sorry, Ben. Like, it might be one of those situations there where he won't be able to really go with Ben, um, just according to their charts and what the cards we've pulled so far. Um, yeah. I do obviously love anybody with Mars and Aquarius. That's fun. Right. Um, I love this makeup too. It's a lot of my my um, makeup here as well. I love a Capricorn because I love goals. I love getting things done. And so does he, I'm sure. Um, yeah. He probably has a checklist and he loves ticking things off and I'm sure Survivor was on his checklist. Um, 
And so with his Libra, it, moon, uh, his moon in Libra, like he's definitely going to want to be balancing these energies. He's going to want to keep the peace. He's going to want to make sure that there's no fighting happening. He's going to want to have like a very tranquil tribe. And maybe Ben doesn't allow the tranquility to be there. And so, yeah, I feel like he's going to be the peacekeeper, though. Yeah, I yeah. can definitely see maybe, yeah, just really wanting it to be tranquil and chill and then maybe stirring the pot a little bit, um, just like energetically wise um, or energy wise. Who knows? The, uh, I will say we have a lack of water here and the the signs we do have besides, I mean, a Libra does want to connect, but Aquarius, Sag, and Capricorn, they do not take things yeah. personally. They, you know, a bit detached, a bit dry. Um, so Love them. connecting with any water on his tribe might be yeah. difficult. He definitely has a plan. He's definitely a man with a plan. So right? mm -hmm. definitely a man with a plan. What'd you say? There hasn't really been any water so far. <gasps> Love oh. it. Oh, he wants a partner. Well, he's gonna like, get himself a partner, Charlie. Moon needs to be you know, satisfied. Uh huh. <laughs> oh wow! What's going oh, on there? Is that the Ten of Cups? Yeah, this is the Ten of Cups. Oh, Charlie. Up, we... And the High Priestess again. <gasps> oh, is he, is he gonna pair up with one of our High Priestesses from the I'm, other tribe? I am really hoping that he. I can see him as, like, you know, it, it, it's funny because we're like, oh, maybe we're missing water. And then I'll pull, like, a, a water, I mean, like, a cups card. Yeah. It's like, I can really, and with the lover's card, it's like, if he finds somebody to pair up with and just, like, feels really good and solid in his alliance, like, his cup is going to be overflowing. And, like, that uh, emotional abundance is going to be, like, pouring out. He's going to be able to... I think make it further in the game with having these like deeper connections with people and you know celebrating his wins like celebrate like whatever wins that look like but like mm -hmm. yeah this is looking great for charlie these are beautiful cards. And the high priestess is still a two and two are things coming together right yeah. and so then with your card being a card of maybe potentially family or feeling like family or having that loving energy that you have with people that you care about or are in relationship to and so it seems as though he's going to come across a very significant relationship in his life whether it's romantic or not um mm -hmm. maybe someone that's going to feel like family to him but it's going to be like a divinely orchestrated like you know coming together like i feel like we might see a really good friendship or really good relationship coming together with charlie i'm curious to who it might be with maybe it's the game maybe it's with himself <sighs> but like i don't know but um yeah. he's something big's gonna go on with him i feel absolutely yeah i did I did want to point out, like, it does not have to be romantic, but it will be a significant partnership. Could even be, like, maybe an older woman who becomes his mom out there or just some sort of great duo that's going to yeah. help him emotionally. Yeah. And on a soul level. Very cool. Some of these his family, for sure. Like, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Strong yeah. level. Like, I'm feeling family. I'm feeling secure. Ooh. Hurry. Okay. Will it be Gemma? Gem is I think 32. Jim's married. <laughs> I think. Um, right? Born yeah. in Guyana, but currently living in Chicago. Sag, oh, Sun, Mercury, Mars. Oh my God, it's going to be one of my faves. Um, <laughs> I don't know about the rest of the drive, though. <laughs> It's always a uh, touch and go. Um, yeah. Scorpio moon. More than likely a Scorpio moon. It did not uh, move into Sag until 11 p.m. that night. Okay, yeah. Oh, good Lord. Don't cross Gem. Um, and a Libra of Venus. I'm hoping for the Scorpio moon, though. It's like. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. She's a Scorpio moon, likely. More likely. I want her to be like a like a assassin with just like a smile on her face you know like oh yeah, that's friends gotcha <laughs> yeah 
Oh my gosh, I'm so I, I'm excited. Very excited to see how this this plays out. Um, if I remember correctly, she and her husband auditioned together, but then they yeah. only decided to bring her into the game. Um, and so I she definitely has a competitive element, even with her husband, which I think is going to be could be interesting, and that could be that Sag fire energy. Go 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 go, um, Sag Mars so competitive she's going to be very competitive for sure nervous right. about impulse control here 100 <laughs> percent. yes yeah <laughs> she's gonna speak her mind she's gonna do what she wants it's all an adventure yeah. for her oh uh, yeah it's definitely yeah. an adventure like and that scorpio moon means like don't cross her like she will remember yeah and, and she will get retaliate. you I'm not sure if this combination is going to work well with her particular tribe. So hopefully they don't go to tribal because um, I feel like just I don't want her in by the fight. No, <laughs> I'm scared. No. Unless they side together. That could be good if they side together. Just yeah, like, but I'm like bring <laughs> all the fire together. But I'm I and if that happens though, I could see her also being maybe on the outs like Ben could be, you know? Yeah. Um no, I mean, Jane, I, no. if I were on the tribe, I'd be down with her, but I'm not sure if her tribe is going to be that excited about oh, all that I guess with all that her. badge, and I'm like, if that is a Scorpio moon, it's like, I'm nervous that, like, she isn't going to, like, conceal that part of herself enough. Like, it's kind of like, I'm an open book. Like, I'm, a, like, just saying all the things, excited about all the things, and being like, yeah, don't cross me. It's like, yeah. keep, just keep don't let people know, you know? So I don't want, I guess I'm a little nervous about her letting people know open book too much, you know yeah. what I mean, about, you know, what she's capable of if that Scorpio moon is there. I'm Let's hope no she's in that earth, way. earth mm -hmm. rising. Let's hope, because I got a 10 of pen okay. calls. Okay. Here for the money. Get it, Gem, get it. <laughs> 10 of pens is a good card. Eight of swords. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. like good to be or not to be. I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think her 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 mouth might get her in trouble. She's gonna have some yeah. issues for sure. I see though. maybe her making trying to make too many alliances with too many people with the face of swords, just giving her word out very quickly without thinking too much about it. So, mm -hmm. what we got? This is the Four of Swords. So this usually relax oh, and recuperate. And so maybe she, if she chooses to maybe tone down a little bit of that fire energy, maybe keep to herself, don't be too bold and out there, then she might be able to move further along in the game. Because it's usually a card of just like taking a break, right? It's yeah. usually a card of like stepping back, um, holding back. Um, yeah, and on these shows, we see that where it's like sometimes you got to take a step back and don't try to come up with every plan. Like, yeah, go with the flow place. as opposed to being the the driver of the strategy or whatever that's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what was your card, Sarah? Again, just before uh, the time. The ten? Yeah. So if she can sit back and go through whatever challenge that Ace of Swords is, she maybe yeah. can come out with at least some money. <laughs> uh, whatever it's going to be, it will be entertaining, I'm sure. Maria. Ooh. She is 48. She's a parent coach, which here, my question is, does she coach parents or is she a coach – She's a parent who's coaching like her kid's school. I'm confused by what parent coach means. Anyone? Okay. I think it's from coaching Dallas. other parents. Oh, really? I thought she'd be like coaching her kid's soccer team, but that'd be very cool. Maybe no. she's like soccer coach, right? Or soccer mom or coach soccer mom. I don't know. And then, and then she coaches people how to be parents, which everyone probably needs that. Well, like parenting, kind of like a relationship yeah. coach, a parent yeah. coach. For sure. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, Libra Sun and Mercury, Aquarius Moon. Ooh, so much air. Uh, Virgo, okay. Venus, Gemini, Mars. A lot of air. She's going to be chatty. She's going to be real chatty. And mental energy. Yeah, with even chatty. I'm nervous about the Gemini Mars 
giving off like nervous energy just because Mars rules the body. So like not being able to really conceal that, like, what do I do? What do I do? Um, but she is 48. She's a grown woman. She knows herself. Um, mm -hmm. But super friendly. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chatty. I think people will enjoy talk. being her friend. This yeah. is like a loose lips sink ships kind of energy. Like she has to know when to keep keep it shut. Keep it absolutely, keep it absolutely. I, but I feel like she's going to be great at making relationships. You know, with mm -hmm. people. Um, like she 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 loves being interacting with others. She has a lot of air energy, so she's going to love talking to people and and maybe coming up with ideas and plans with the Aquarius energy in her her moon here. She's going to likely think outside of the box. And so she I think she's going to be entertaining to to people. She might be like mm -hmm. a little bit different, a little bit like, "Oh, she's she's entertaining." And I think yeah. likable. Um I do see what you're saying though with the Gemini and Mars, and so I could get a little bit worried there that like she might be a little bit too chatty at times yeah. um but i think she's going to be quite smart and i think people are going to be interested in her especially that she has age on her side as well and so she might be looked at someone that's wise and yeah. that has like really interesting stories and ideas so mm -hmm. i agree i definitely see her connecting with people through like stories and yeah definitely chatting a lot with the chatting a lot and like people probably wanting to chat with her um i can see a little i get a little nervous because it's like we were literally just having a conversation we weren't talking game but like her wanting to chat a lot it's like you can't <laughs> yeah and she's going to want to, you know, be analytical with that Virgo Venus. Super she's really going to want to get I'm all I'm nervous it. that she's going to, oh, oh, yeah. Nine Three of swords. Of all that air energy. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Nine of swords. I'm... Not one of our greatest cards, Maria. No. Um, I'm nervous that's... about her overthinking a yes. lot. And maybe this... not being able to act on the, all the plans and thoughts. Mm-hmm. Maria, Maria. She definitely is going to have some challenges with other people. If there's a nine of swords, there is some sort of um, not getting along. My a three of pentacles. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay, that's that's better. That's some sort that's of helpful. teamwork. And I have the queen of pentacles. Ooh. Okay, okay. Huh. I feel like maybe she's going to get disappointed in the alliance or maybe like people are going to be telling her too much information with that three of swords. It's like disappointment and then actually maybe break off and find her own, be like, okay, queen of pentacles, I need to be my own resource. And through that, maybe finding people that she can actually practically work for, work with, even if she maybe doesn't necessarily get along with them, there's like a respect there and like a wanting to like build a foundation there. Because the three of swords is like, you got three of swords, right? Nine. No, I got a nine. Oh, nine of swords. Okay. I was like, three of swords. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, a nine of swords isn't too much better. Nine of swords is not too much better, but. No. <laughs> I thought well, it was she definitely is going to have, yeah, there's going to be some sort of challenge with the Nine of Swords, but yeah, y'all, your cards make it seem like if she can get through that, yeah, she's got some potential or some hope there. Yeah, the Nine That's of Swords to me is like a living nightmare that only she's experiencing. So she might be overthinking things that are happening or they're whispering, kind of saying that like, oh, we're just talking. We're not talking about you. Like she might she might let her thoughts some paranoia. get her into a little bit of trouble, which maybe That's will make her an outcast that she needs to rebuild, like what you have there with the Three of Pentacles. Yeah. Um, let's people coming together to build something with some structure. And this Queen of Pentacles is a pretty decent card that kind of says that she has the capacity of, of being the ruler, you know, and being like the, the very fortunate ruler. So maybe she is able to come to and rebuild and not allow her thoughts to get the best of her that she'll yeah. be able to have like a solid foundation that allows her to get to the end of the game so yeah. not necessarily a winning card with the queen of pentacles but it could say getting to the end it could say mm -hmm. getting further than maybe originally expected yeah mm -hmm. 
getting an actual tangible advantage. Yeah. The three of yeah. pentacles. It's some power. Of, yeah, I guess yeah. some power. Or maybe people, people sharing an advantage with her, uh, mm -hmm. that information, mm -hmm. that's like all that air. Maybe, um, or maybe this is depending on what the immunity or the like the individual immunity is. Like maybe she'll wear an individual immunity crown or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. What it is. Oh my god, I would love it if it's a crown one season. Please make it a crown. Oh my god, we need to make it a crown. <laughs> Mariah. 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 Fun. Twenty-eight, originally from uh, Florida, but now in San Diego. Um, she's a Pisces. She is more than likely a Leo moon. It went into Virgo at 11 p.m. that night. So more than likely a Leo moon. And I mean, look at the hair. <laughs> well, I was about uh, to say. <laughs> Mercury and Venus are in Aquarius and Mars in Leo. I love a Mercury-Venus conjunction, especially in Aquarius, like for this game. It's given me like a really good mind she's a really good mind for this game she's able to like detach herself a little bit to like make the choices she needs to make and also think out of the box and be aligned with like her own values while she's doing it so mm -hmm. that's that's my note there i really like that but i'm curious yeah. though about the the moon and mars in leo yeah. um True. I'm <laughs> <laughs> if she's going to want to maybe be the center of attention and kind of draw, like want to have that energy onto her and how that's going to fit with the rest of the tribe, not sure yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so just because, you know, action, you know, the, that Mars being in like, I want to be the center of everything. Um, and those I'm are hmm? opposing each other too. Mm -hmm. So there's going to, in her chart so those are going to be it's like a push pull it's like i want the attention that i want to hide and i want you know it's she might have like an internal like push pull through this journey of like how she wants to tackle the game a little bit so yeah i mean do i want to hide behind an alliance pisces. or do i want to be driving driving the boat right. but she's a pisces sign yeah yeah like the pisces could soften that leo to be like the generous side of leo of like um, just that loving, giving combo, um, you know, or that desire to be this the queen of the jungle um, with a little delusion. Like you, you never know <laughs> with that Pisces, like what 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 river they're swimming in. You, you know, never know. <laughs> but we did have so she's our Pisces on this tribe, and we had um been with a pisces venus so i wonder if there'll be any sort of connection there or at least an understanding of each other maybe fire they've got a lot of fire that they can maybe bond yeah. over all right let's see mariah <laughs> okay that's like let's tame that lion okay uh two of tame that lion. <laughs> Which strength. one? I'm sorry. Which one do you have? Just strength. Oh, strength. Oh, okay. Okay. Two of Pentacles. A uh, decision, maybe a partner, maybe, but need the strength to get through it. And when then, what do you have? I have the Five of Wands. Oh yeah. So the, I think her journey is going to be taming her lionessness. Or, or, har it or harnessing it or, you know, adapting and utilizing it in a way that's uh, more inclusive as opposed to making her, you know, potentially this like standing out. So that yeah. would probably likely be her journey, according to the cards. You can definitely see that also just like having the inner strength as well um, to like move forward, um, noticing the wild parts of herself and being like, yes, I'm going to tame them. But like, that is going to be with like that's going to be with like love and compassion and just like seeing my being able to see herself in a kind of a different light i can almost see for her it's like maybe i didn't know that this existed inside mm, of me right. um, yes. and kind of being able to like push forward with that energy because the strength part is like yes like taming myself um seeing these like wild parts of ourselves but it's also like 
getting in touch with that like deep, almost like inner child and letting those wild parts come through, maybe seeing ourselves in a different light and maybe having like a, like a big moment of seeing that strength for, for her. So I, I like that. Um, I'm not sure how far it's going to get her. Especially, yeah. Maybe it comes back to some sort of a fight or some sort of conflict. Um, maybe yeah. that's where she's going to find that strength from within to be able to, yeah. you know, step into that side of her, the fiery side of her. Yeah. Totally. I hope she's able to just like pull up that strength and like, you know, give out that beautiful Ooh, Pisces yeah. energy. Yeah. Okay, Mariah. Um, now is Tim from Atlanta. He's our yeah. last member of this tribe. He's a coach for college. Um, he is a Leo, Sun, Mercury, Venus. <laughs> oh and he's either a Gemini or Pisces Moon, Gemini Mars. Hey, fire. We've got more Leo. He's coach. That Leo knows how to pump people up. I'm excited to see him use that energy on the tribe in like a really constructive way, especially. Oh, we got just Leo and Gemini. All yeah. right, we're talking. Yeah, um, <laughs> we are. We're talking. We're chatting. We're gathering information. Gathering information. Um, and being able to use, like, I see him as, like, uh, somebody who people are hopefully going to really value on his tribe. If he can use his words to, like, uplift people in the same way he does in his day-to-day -day life, um, like, through coaching and through, but also it's, like, yes, you're coached, but, like, am I ask, asking to be coached, you know? So, like, knowing when to, like, lend a hand, when to not lend a hand is important because you may know, but, like, Maybe somebody doesn't care if you know. Right. Yeah. It all, it depends on the people around you. Like I, Bruce is such a good example of Leo energy. Like his original tribe, great. Loved him. Fit in. Great. The next yep. season that he ends up really playing on, those people do not resonate with Leo energy. Um, and so. That's I mean, exactly he, what I was thinking of. His tribe is pretty mixed. But there yeah. is lots of fire on it. So do they work together? Do they enjoy it? Or is it fighting? Yeah, combust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with the Leo energy, I'm wondering if it will play out as, you know, fun and games and childlike. And so maybe he's going to be like, let's get everybody together to play a game and let's have fun and have a good time. Um, which actually reminds me of Bruce quite a bit. And yeah. now it's whether or not the people want to be playing that game and having a good time and making a joke out of a, that, a lot of things, if they're going to be on that page with him. Um, but I do yeah. think that he's going to be wanting to lighten up the mood and have a good time and really enjoy the experience um, from kind of a games childlike Leo perspective. So uh, hopefully they really enjoy it and that he, you know he's they yeah I, I hope that the other fire people on his tribe are like lit up by that you know and right. seeing just yeah yeah okay tim what cards do you want buddy okay a five of wands starting us off oh boy oh boy well like the other the other fire person um got that too right that last person we just did um, yeah, well, she was a Leo moon, but she's a Pisces, but yeah, she got a five of wands. He needs to know when it's time to rest. Four oh, of swords. Four of swords. Okay. Yeah. He needs to know when to step back. Mm -hmm. And we got an ace of wands. So. Okay. That's a scary Thanks. card. Yeah. Cause sometimes that means like your snuff is. Out snuff. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Especially uh, with like the four of, I think it's like, no. yeah, lay to rest. <laughs> and with, um, the, with the fire, the five of, of, of sword or one, sorry. Wands, yeah. Seems yeah, like a lot of that fire energy and he gets taken out early. Yeah. Or it's like maybe he gets really burnt out. Okay. And like the game forces him to slow down. 
and maybe he gets reignited with energy after like a potential swap or like after he kind of like switches maybe the way he's like attacking the game and like maybe the the wands the ace of wands is like this reignited energy for him so that's like another way of looking at it like maybe he gets burnt out maybe something happens that almost checks him to tell him he needs to like come at this a different way and kind of like sit back a little bit with this four of swords and maybe the wand is is showing like a a A new new, almost like a new life for him yeah yeah maybe he loses his vote and then he he gets his life back in the game yeah. I can definitely see the four of swords as like almost a losing the boat type losing of your, voice, your power. Yeah. And then maybe yeah. regaining it again. Um, but where does that five of wands come in? Hopefully yeah, it's I mean, four. He has to get, that's, I can he has to get through whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, I can see the five of wands because like some it looks like they're playing, but also are they combating? So it's like, yeah, let's have fun, let's play, but it's like maybe it, do you think it will are. be with the other person that got the five of wands? Maybe they will have the the friction. Yeah, maybe. And like maybe one person is taking it super seriously, and maybe the other person is seeing it as play. So I can see him almost the like Pisces. Maybe she's offended, and he's just playing. And he's just playing. Yeah, I can kind of see that like causing friction of him just being like, "Oh, we're just having fun." It's like I'm not. I I don't want to have fun right now. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is just not my vibe especially the Pisces is like in their field it's like yeah like yeah. you can't just, some people can't just decide to be excited and have fun like we gotta feel our feelings first so yeah you know, like maybe see that as that that card there well we are moving on to our last tribe the Yanu tribe purple Let's see. We've awesome. got some water, some water, some water, some fire, some water. I feel like it's water and fire, oh and I think it's going to be a messy season. <laughs> this fire. is going to be interesting. All right. Let's start with Banu. Okay, so yeah. actually, what is Banu? He, he, I don't know what his sign is. Okay. Oh, Scorpio. Okay. Yes. He, we last minute got his birthday. He is originally from India, but he is now in Massachusetts working in IT. He's a Scorpio sun, Mercury, oh and Venus. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So it has to do with him, episode two, right? Well, yeah, I'm like big Scorpio uh, energy. Hello. <laughs> His moon is also, I also possibly weird, Scorpio. I'm sorry, go ahead. I have a weird prediction that maybe it's said about Jeff at Tribal Council. Um, He's a Scorpio. I don't know. Yeah, he Jeff's is. a Scorpio. Jeff's a Scorpio. I told him at final yeah. trial, like, at the reunion of the after show, I was like, if you're not a Scorpio, I quit astrology. And he's like, I'm a Scorpio. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my 100%. god, he's such a Scorpio. That's a Scorpio. Uh, so he- it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's intense. They're intense. Super intense. Anyway, so we got that new. Uh Bonnie's moon could be Libra or Scorpio. Uh that was about midday, so either or. Um and a Capricorn Mars. Um, but when I did run his chart, everything, all the planets were between Libra and and Capricorn like he's got everything within just a few houses it was an interesting chart um oh Bono (laughs) I am curious about what his rising sign is then if his all of everything's come together to see like where does it all play out Mm -hmm. yeah I know he does like dance which is so great for moving all that like Scorpio energy um love that um He's got to have fire. Capricorn have Mars. Fire. Come on. He might just have an agenda. Like. Yes. <laughs> he's going to get to work. He's here I to mean, work. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have a lot his... of fixed energy, right? All that Scorpio. And then to have that Capricorn Mars is like, he he's already got his set, whatever he's doing. And he's just going yeah. implement yeah, that's... it whether the yeah. rest of the people are there or not he's i don't think he's going to be able to get i mean i haven't seen everybody else's chart yet but from what i'm seeing yeah. on his the energy that he's likely going to be giving off people are going to be like excuse me like i'm not going yeah. with that plan. like i don't i feel like he's going to think that what he 
believes it's the right way and yeah. he's already kind of decided how things are going to go and he doesn't really have that much yeah. room for any other ways of thinking and so maybe in the beginning people will go along with it and they're like wait what do we do? we there's more of us than than him like let's do our own thing so his that's i've never really seen all that scorpio energy in, in one person's chart. and then with like a capricorn mars it's just like this is the way we're doing it yeah. and yep <laughs> the plan that's the plan so yeah it's gonna be really interesting to see banu out there um it's all that Scorpio energy. Like, oh, I'm really yeah. nervous that that is going to come off as, like, you know, that paranoia that, you know, Scorpio can kind of have. It's like, oh, if people aren't agreeing with me right away, maybe, like, emitting that, like, big Scorpio energy of, like, you but know, just kind of, like, they think, they yeah. They things go, right? So, like, yeah. if they feel done wrong, he's going to, like, he, he's no, we're not going to let anybody get away with anything. And anything. So he will remember. Yeah. So will I'm remember. nervous that second episode is about <laughs> Banu. I hope his moon is Libra just to help him uh, out with a little bit of balance. Well, I hope it's here. not because I need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got plenty of Scorpio. So You're going to see it. You're going to see it. You know whose chart is similar is Phaedra. She's a sun, Mercury, moon, Scorpio. Wow. Oh, my God. That makes it's, so much sense. I love like Phaedra. She's like going to battle is a skill. It's a yeah. special skill they have. Yeah. Like if you cross them, and they're gonna think you've crossed them before you've even crossed them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they're retaliating then, already. And they're and then their yeah. next step is retaliation, which is yeah. gonna be super fun for us to watch. Yeah. Um, that's a very resilient, you know, like that Scorpio mm -hmm. energy, like all that Mars, all that Pluto energy. It's like, I will go through the depths of whatever it is to get to where I need to be. Like that, 100%. all that depth that Scorpio has, it's like, it's a and lot. And we'll go to the depths to figure out what the F is actually going on. It's and super why. investigative. Yeah. Super like, almost like, also, I wonder if he's going to have like any if he's like tuned into this and tuned into himself, I wonder if he is going to have any like almost like psychic, like, you know, is it paranoia or is it like, am I having a bit of like an into like super intuitive, like investigative thing? Like he's going to be able to read energy super well, very Scorpios are super perce um, per yeah. perceptive. I'm like, Oh, what P word am I he's using? 41. So that does give me hope that he has like he's figured yeah. out that he's intuitive and that he, yeah. he knows what's going on. If but he like, brings people that in. Him don't necessarily like to hear that someone knows what's going on and that they're correct. You well, know, he has so, to keep it to himself. For sure. Yeah. Hopefully that Scorpio energy knows to keep that in and that he can kind of like use all these Scorpio powers to his favor. I would love to see that. Oh my God. Like a, I Intuitive Scorpio King just manipulating. Ah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah I, would love to see it. I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, give me all oh, the devil go. energy. Oh, my now. gosh. That's his Capricorn. Scorpio right calls the devil, of course. Yes. Well, yeah, with that pair with that Capricorn uh, Mars. Yes, sir. I love it. And we have a three of cups. Oh. Oh. Is he gonna find his people? He's gonna. Get I her. hope he finds his people. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a hopeful card, and this is also a hopeful card. I got the Queen of Pentacles again. <gasps> oh. Is he gonna make it through? The devil is you... winning. The devil. We've had oh. it all decently successful, right? Yeah. They usually get to at least to merge, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So. Maybe oh, yeah. the Banu is gonna have to cut the ties with whatever the devil is, whether that's internal ties, maybe he's gonna have a reflection moment. Um, maybe people are gonna bring him in and that's gonna really like calm, suppress that like probing Scorpio energy and he's gonna be able to make it far with this alliance or whatever's going on here. I love the Three of Cups. Yes. Well, and so, like, does that mean that, like, he maybe he is going to know best? And, you know, we know a Capricorn loves, like, material things and, you know, getting things to happen financially or, like, you know, in the material world. And so I'm wondering, like, is he going to get to the top to the end? Yeah. 
he's going to make it far. He's jury yeah. for sure, if not yeah. in the final three. I mean, three of cups could be final three. I don't know. It could be. I've had the, fi- the three of cups be a final three card before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Oh, my God. We're so, so I fascinating. Was like, that. And now I need to see that journey because, like, Damn. Yes. <laughs> well, first Jelensky. off, is he going to be best friends with Jelensky here, fellow Scorpio on this tribe? He's oh. very young, though. He's 22. He is from Vegas. He's slot machine sales. Um, Scorpio, he's either Taurus or Gemini Moon. He's giving Gemini. Very and venus and aquarius wow. mars so he's got some some air there i could see him being able to use his words to manipulate if he got a gemini moon like that libra charm being able to pull people in scorpio aquarius plan maker like and be able to think out of the box like i could see him thinking that he's like can be good with his words Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just thinking that he's good with his words, but well, yeah, true. wanting to. Ha- I I wonder if they're going to have a power dynamic issue with the two Scorpios. Age oh, that's might be a thing, right? That's true. They may be too far apart to connect. Yeah. They're just generationally not going to be in line with like just how to move in the world, and so yeah. they might get along innately. But um, I, I do worry that he might not have evolved into being able to handle some of these energies. Like, he's so young. Yeah, and the moon really is going to make a difference for a Taurus or a Gemini moon. I don't feel Taurus from him. Because he doesn't seem very earthy, earthy to me in this I photo. I could talk. be wrong. But... Yeah, I need yeah. to talk. Um, I feel like he's a fast talker, though, no? I haven't seen Me too. I'm getting, like, I don't know if it's maybe from an interview I saw from him or whatever, those, like, little audition videos. But, like, I'm getting Gemini Moon. Like, I feel like he's, like, kind of sticking his hands in every pot that's available and, like, that investigate. If he's a Gemini Moon with that investigative Scorpio, he's going to want to know everything. And I feel like that could potentially put a target on his back. Hopefully his way with people can really help that like help help you know kind of take that down a little bit yeah the libra but energy libra, could be very helpful just with like building connections and relationships six uh, six. Six. okay six, six cups is cost. good um might have a good childhood story for us might have a good <laughs> package about his past I'm like, I'm gonna ask my sisters if they know him because they're around his age. The <laughs> magician. Oh, it's a good oh. card too. This is a great card. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorites. Get the magician much for these, have we? I wonder who. I don't think we've ever gotten the magician, to be honest. So the magician oh, yeah. is, at least for me, like in this in this scenario, is somebody who can see that they have all the tools to make it happen. It's like I really. Yeah hope he believes in himself um and is able to like conjure up maybe he's gonna slide by a couple votes somehow like i don't know like using using yeah all of his tools you have the pentacles you have the cup you have the wand you have the sword um being very resourceful and you have and the, what sun. Is that for you? It's the sun oh, the sun this, like i Originally, this combination is a really good combination of cards, I would say. Yeah, I think of the fool's journey with like the you know, learning that you can take into action, like you have all the tools, like you're saying, to be able to make whatever you want manifest. And this is showing that, like, as you keep on moving towards that direction, like you're going to have your day in the spotlight, the you know, the the sun. Um. That's yeah, a really good card. and then it the seems nostalgia like people trust part. him, right? They yeah, I think connect emotionally with him and then trust yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Is do you know anything about his his story? Like, is this like a dream come true for him? Because if mm. that's the case that he's been watching since he was young, like I, I feel as though he maybe he'll tell a story about like I manifested this, like I dreamt this up, like I. I saw myself playing and winning this game or something like that. What were we going to say? He does have a survivor slot machine in his room. So he is oh. a super fan. Like, he is a very big fan of the show. Um, and I can really, like, 
this the son and the magician it's like i feel like this is really a dream manifest for him and like he is gonna do what like he's gonna be resourceful he's gonna like take everything he can to like make this moment happen for himself so i really like this this card prediction for our friend jolinski here and yeah. I can see this being like a really good, him having a lot of um, momentum. Once he catches that momentum, maybe he's going to have an emotional moment in the game that's going to give him that momentum, a moment of nostalgia, a moment of childhood. Um, even if it's just arriving on the beach for the first time, he's being like, I've dreamt of this forever. And then oh, using no, that right. as momentum to fuel this energy here. So I think he's going to be very resourceful. An Aubrey Bracco moment where kind of ha like maybe that six of pen of, of cups is like okay, kind of like a rock bottom emotionally in the beginning of the game, and then able yeah. to kind of conjure all that energy, use that magician energy to like start actualizing yeah. and moving towards his dream. So yeah. I don't know if it's a w it's it could be winning, but don't know could for be him be winning. But I think he's going to be have a winning experience. It's going to be a it feels personal win. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Whether no matter how he does in the actual game, like this is yeah. going to be the experience of a lifetime for him. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right. Moving off of Scorpios, but still in the water. <laughs> Pisces. Yes. So we have two Scorpios and a Pisces on this tribe already. Yes, ma'am. And we have another Pisces coming up. Oh, Hello. Hello. Wow. Uh, Pisces Sun and Venus, Capricorn Moon. I can see that in this photo. Yeah. Uh, Aries, Mercury, Sagittarius, Mars. <laughs> I mean, it. this chart with the picture of Pisces <laughs> with a Capricorn Moon I and an Aries Mercury. Like, I love that energy together. Like, Pisces Sun being able to dream up the Capricorn Moon is the doer. It's like, yeah, I'm going to take my dreams. I'm going to make it into reality. And Aries, I'm going to trailblaze my way through it. And I'm going to make the shots. I'm going to call the shots. I'm going to, like, be in charge of my own destiny. Like, I really do get that um, energy here. And a Mars Sagittarius, like, awesome. She's competitive. She's dynamic. Yeah. She's ready to go. I, I like the Pisces Capricorn Moon combo a lot. And I do love that she's going to be probably imaginative and like she's just I think we're she, she's going to be a person that we're going to enjoy hearing the game of Survivor through her perspective and like how she maybe shares her her experience in her confessionals and whatnot like I feel like I'm going to be enjoying living this experience through her eyes um for whatever reason I think it's just yeah the Pisces Pisces there I think she's going to be a nice yeah. Storyteller, dreamer. I was realizing this this chart is very similar to my mom's. She's a Pisces Aww. cap moon. Has your mom with storytelling? I mean, uh, not great with storytelling. Um, but <laughs> this is a different generation, obviously. Um, so that might have some things different. But I was going to say, like, because that Capricorn mo moon with my mom's Pisces sun is like she's so hard on herself. Oh, and, I am hard on myself. Yeah. yeah, you're oh, you're Capricorn, Capricorn Moon, you get it. Um, yeah, but because I the Pisces are so deeply feeling, and then if you add, like, being so hard on yourself on top of that, like... Um, Actually, I have a friend that's a Pisces sun and a Capricorn moon, and she suffers in silence. She yeah. will never yeah. think what's actually how, what's really going on. Yeah. Um, so hopefully... She I allows hope, us to see that. Yeah, anyway. that the Pisces Venus. Like, I hope we we get um, some of that to come out, and you know, uh, but she, yeah, she might be very reserved and just like suffering in silence, thinking, <laughs> thinking she's not good enough or not doing it right. You know. Yeah, um, that Capricorn she, Moon will beat yourself up. Like it's yeah. kind of be a little. It can be a little pessimistic. Um. So. And the Pisces can kind of take that and, and roll with it. So. But Aries also, Capricorn Moon is creative and artistic. Yeah, very That's... sarcastic. Mm, yes. <laughs> so I hope, oh, I hope she has like some sarcastic. Yeah. Like, I don't know. A Capricorn moons are hilarious to me. Good, to, yeah, good sense dry, of humor. Good sense of humor. Like, I yeah. love it. I love it. I find them absolutely hilarious. 
Yeah. Uh, she's got some good sarcasm. Okay, I want to see her confessionals. <laughs> I feel like I relate to her. I guess it's probably the Capricorn moon. King of, King Pentacles. of Pentacles. Wow. It's a money card. <laughs> Jumping. Oh, it's that, well, that like also can oh. be a, a lot of thoughts, but that's almost getting to the end. So, yeah, yeah I be, see this as going pretty far. She is going to be judged, which hopefully means at the end. <laughs> well, also that Capricorn moon kind of judging herself also um, maybe being a little too heavy on maybe her first initial impressions of others. Yeah. Um, and then I got the Page of Cups. Oh. So I'm wondering if she's going to allow, because that's a very Pisces card to me, you know, with the mm. fish in the cup there. Um, I'm wondering if she's going to allow herself to intuitively move through the game. Yeah. Um, and maybe, like, she, yes, I do think that she's going to probably be hard on herself, but I do, I feel like she's going to allow herself to to make the right the right choices the right decisions like move yeah. like in flow like I, I i'm i'm feeling flow for her with right. this card she's gonna get some intuitive hits that she's gonna lead her in the quote-unquote right direction yeah I okay. pair, pair plug my phone in <laughs> no. yes get yourself situated um, sorry paired that with okay? the king of pentacles yeah you look great beautiful beautiful um, yeah, maybe that's a good good pairing. Um, ju maybe judge she's on the the jury and just judging other. But yeah, she has yeah, to go it's judgment so of any so jury judgment. or mm -hmm. being judged. judged at the end. Sometimes I look at the judgment card as leaving a legacy. Um, yeah. So, uh, like, because it's kind of like when you, in, in a life cycle, when you get to the end of a life cycle, cycle, you're always like, what am I leaving behind? Like, yep. what, what have I done to whatever? So, like, I feel like that could be even like a speaking on the speaking on the jury and like okay. showing why she's there and and when what what why she deserves to win, you know. Um, so I don't know. The judgment card could be going quite a far distance for sure. Mm -hmm. I also love the judgment card just as the survivor as an experience. It's like this card always reminds me of like when you look back on your life, like what are you going to see? And exactly. I think this is going to be a great experience. For, or, or it's going to be an experience for her to look back on exactly that legacy of just like, you know, I took the chance, I did the risk and like I couldn't. Like at the end of the day, you have to be proud of yourself for taking the risk and taking the chance. So I love the judgment card um, just like in an existential Philosophical way, um, yeah. lives. She's a little older. She's thirty-seven, but she's not the oldest on her tribe. Um, she's from Hong Kong originally, and now lives in San Francisco. So, um, you know, hopefully, there's some connection points that she can make with her tribe mates. Uh, Miss Kenzie was kind enough to give us her rising sign. How lucky are we? So fortunate. Thank you so much. She's 29, owns a salon in Charlotte, North Carolina. She has a lot of Leo, Sun, <laughs> Moon, and Mercury, a rising Sagittarius, Venus. There's Margo, so Mercury. much fire. <laughs> She got a little you. bit of fire. Got a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, as soon as I looked at her, I was like, fire. I, I fire. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Um, yeah. Maybe people, she's going to meet, she might be a natural leader kind of in her tribe. Um, Virgo Venus, love to see that. Um, Same tribe as the coach? No. This is tribe with the coach. It is. So I hope that, I, I, right? Tim, Tim's on this tribe? No. Um, no, we have the we had the parent coach on this tribe, Maria, but there were oh, okay, coaches sorry. on the other. Oh, I thought isn't Tim on this coach? Uh, Tim mm -mm. Spicer on this tribe no. too? Oh wait, no, <laughs> no, okay. Okay, Never mind. Yeah, Tim's coming up. Yes, yes okay, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I was like, there's another Leo, like heavy Leo person mm -hmm. on the tribe. Yep. So I hope that they like this is like the piece that Tim is looking for with somebody who wants to have fun. Like I, yeah. she's giving me fun. She's a sad rising, like. Gotta love a sad rising. Um, 
I do. Oh. I personally do. <laughs> Taking in the experience for what it is, but also having fun with it. But I do, I can kind of see her maybe being like, because Leos are very like, yes, they are like, oh, me first. But they're also like, I shine so other people can shine too. Exactly. Um, So generous. Yeah. It's so generous. So, you know, kind of being that like uplifting person and maybe people will be naturally drawn to her. Um, Yeah, just generous and kind and, and playful. Like, I I guess maybe that's even just with the Sag rising and this picture. She's kind of, like, laughing. It's, like, I can see this, like, playful, almost, like, mama bear energy with her. Um, But also had drunk. Also had drunk. Tim Tim is not on this tribe. Oh, okay. Tim is on Sega. This is... Maybe it's because he's wearing a green shirt. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Even though this is a purple tribe. I don't even know. Right. Why is she in green? Um, To confuse Do I have it wrong? I have her on this tribe. Um, well, anyway, here she is. Uh, yeah, a lot of fire. And look, yeah, we can list all the positives about all the fire. I mean, they're great on these shows. They're competitive. They're fun. They're up for the adventure. Um, they're willing to go for it. Uh, you know, Leo Moon could definitely be like, do you know who you're talking to? But do you know who I am kind of yeah. energy? <laughs> Um, especially if someone crosses them, it kind of flares up. Uh, but it just depends, you know, how, uh, how you work with it. I have a stellium in Sagittarius. Yes. Am I too much for people? Yes. (laughs) But also, am I amazing? Yes. So, you know, it just. Girl, I feel that. (laughs) Um, once again, the Gemini is Mars. Just mm-hmm. makes me a little nervous that that energy, Mars rules the body, Gemini energy, trying to just want to get too much information. Um, it's kind of like a, can almost be like a gossipy placement for yeah. me, but also showing nervous energy through the body. So she's a salon so, owner. Oh, that you yeah. to gossip. So she knows <laughs> how to talk. Yeah. But Let's also, we, like for what three leo placements yeah she's a salon owner <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course taking care of that hair that Gotta those, take yes. care of the hair baby those um, i think she said she's married to a leo oh wow she's, um, fun she said their house is very fun so i i hope that she yeah it's just so we got two scorpios on that tribe a libra Right. That's a thing to consider. A Leo versus Scorpios. Like that's those are intense energies that do not necessarily mix. Yeah. Cuz the Leo's like, "Who are you?" Yeah. <laughs> who are you? And do you know who I am? And the like, Scorpios are like, "Me mm. be." They don't yeah. innately get along, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. And or well, or the Leo doesn't necessarily um realize that the Scorpio and her don't get along or them don't get along. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if the Libra is gonna be like stuck in between. <laughs> right? And be like, oh, completely. like completely. Well so with her um Venus being in Virgo, so she she might be uh, analytical and so yeah. and, and looking at the details about things. So definitely you know, that and her Gemini, like just having some of that Mercury like Mercury rolled yeah so she hopefully she'll be thoughtful you know a little bit thinking um as opposed to impulsive which is all that other fire stuff so hopefully that it will help her be a little bit more thoughtful than impulsive but we'll see ten of cups some emotional fulfillment Mm -hmm. is she going on a journey Ooh, is she i got the six of swords here She's going somewhere. Okay, because she's going somewhere big time. <laughs> Is that the tower? Girl. Oh, boy. oh my God. She's going to have a make or break point in her game. Absolutely. Yep. And she's either going to have to like leave it behind and, and go forward or... Or be like, this is what I'm working with. I It's hard to leave. It's hard to like make this choice that I have to make. I can almost see her having a little bit of like guilt or something. Would it be... Um, I, would, or like, I need to say it, but a quit because Hannah got the Ten of Cups in her sure thing with a tower and with a, you know, leave things behind card. Like, I'm wondering if maybe it's not the experience for her and that she doesn't want to maybe. 
for maybe some, she has to out. Yeah, for some reason, I feel like a triple Leo is not going to quit. But no. <laughs> you know, like the pride is too real. <laughs> it could also be a tribe switch. It could be a swap. You know, like a she's moving. The Six of Swords is moving on to something, and a tower. The game has got to completely start over for her. Yeah. Um, but you'll but see with, the star card. Oh no, the, maybe the Ten of Cups is her star card. Her like her light at the end of the tunnel. So maybe, I, feel like, I mean that emotional fulfillment she's got to get somewhere, whether it's on this beach or elsewhere. Yeah, but I think there is definitely with the, this card and your tower card, there is a like pivotal point in the game where yeah. something happens. She loses <laughs> her alliance. She loses her try. Like something, she has to completely pivot. Yeah, and, and definitely play it differently and we've definitely had the tower many times in these and it just depends on if the player is able to pivot totally so do you think that this tribe could be the tribe that goes often to tribal council yes like i'm wondering if it's that type of vibe maybe this maybe her tribe just gets decimated just, and like yeah. she oh maybe when standing maybe and, she's the last one <laughs> and she goes on that journey by herself to find a new tribe a new family which could be the ten of cups um but like her tribe had to just all come crumbling down yeah very possible yeah or just like yeah because all of that scorpio energy that she's gonna be with out there is it's a lot it's, it's a lot turmoil, and so maybe right? like plans coming down like these ideas that i had about the game Falling yeah. up, falling down yeah. <laughs> around me, but but then we have the ten of cups, so it's like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe yeah. that's just her thinking about what's once again bringing her in this game, or like just giving her that push, just like knowing that like the end will come. <laughs> yeah, it she might be better. able to <laughs> find her friends. She might be able to find her alliances, her friends. Yeah, eventually. Uh, but we did learn a big lesson with Hannah. We thought winning cards, uh, but that Ten of Cups was her finding that joy elsewhere with her literal yep. family. Yep. So um, you never know. We just have two more, you guys. This wow. is Q. He is 29 from Memphis. Pisces, another Pisces, <laughs> uh, Sun and Mars. But we've got some good air here. Aquarius, Moon, and Mercury. And a Venus in Aries. Giving it to us, Q. Oh, my goodness. We have so two Pisces, two Scorpios, two Scorpios. and then a Leo on this tribe. Aquarius is the last. No. no. Jeff is on the other tribe. Sorry. But yeah. So many people. Yeah, we'll just go over at the end. But yeah. we'll another Pisces, a, mm -hmm. Aquarius Moon, and Mercury. I mean, he's he's willing to to talk it out and and you know analyze a plan, which is which is good. And likely um, there for the collective, there for the group. So yeah. he's not uh, necessarily going to be you know, self interested. He's he's going to be for yes. the tribe. I would assume. 100%. I can find that dynamic though in Aquarius. It's like, yes, I'm here for the collective, but I also need to go to the beat of my own drum. It's like I need to be like my individual self. So like there is that like duality to Aquarius that like sometimes, especially like I heard that he's one of 17 kids. So maybe that like need for in yeah, that need for individuation is really yeah. strong and that could be that could also be that Aquarius being like, I need to be me <laughs> like yeah. in in my own way. Um, so yes, the collective, but also on the other side of Aquarius, it's like I am here You're to celebrate my unique gifts and my yes. uniqueness. I can see that too, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but compassionate and caring, I mean, his Mars and Sun in Pisces. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, uh, I do think that he's gonna be a minority on his tribe and in this entire season of like yeah. not jumping and being like my plan first <laughs> totally totally um i get worried about 
Pisces in Mars, like martyr mm. syndrome mm. or being like, you know, maybe putting himself in like a risky situation to save a part of his alliance or yeah. to, um, yeah, just to like fulfill something within himself because that Pisces and Mars, like it's like, I will die on the sword for you. Like I will, yeah. you know, let me sacrifice. Like Pisces can be very like, you know, sacrificial or for the greater good or whatever. But it's like, is it for the greater good of your game? You know, so. Depending just, on his rising, we, we got some strong people pleasing energy here. Fair. I can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, lack of boundaries. You and Aries Venus, though. I love that. I love that. I feel like he'll be like. So he might fun get along like, with our Leos. Yeah, yeah that might. Mm -hmm. He might be drawn to the Leos, which would put the uh, Scorpios in the minority if that were the case. Six of Pentacles. Hmm, that's a bit of a rocky journey. Sometimes in the minority, sometimes in the majority. Would the two? Mm-hmm. Eight of cups. Eight. So that's that kind of leans towards the, the martyrdom entire, uh, perspective that you're kind of bringing through. Um, it, you know, walking away from something emotional. So I think he's going to have an emotional journey on this season from, from my card. You know, maybe he has to balance yeah. out between you know whether he's doing himself for himself or maybe is maybe he is going to balance between himself and the good or the greater good um what was yours again sarah the six I of pentacles two of pentacles oh, so we have pentacles two. so he might uh, get some hardware yeah i'm hoping um decision making um balancing the values balancing his values kind of going back and forth like with that eight of cups of like who am I doing this for? What am I doing this for? What choice do I need to make um, yeah. that is aligned with, you know, my values and and finding the balance really of, you know, maybe playing this game really hard, playing this game really like on, in a softer sense. So that's going to be a really interesting journey for him. You know what? Um, Six of Pentacles is making me think of now going off of last season is getting an idol but losing your vote. Mm. Six of Pentacles, I think of as like the have and the have not, like the back and forth. Yep. Um, so he might get some sort of advantage, but making him lose a vote or a spot or a, you know, yeah. some sort of downside to it. Well, yeah, it's like with your two combo, um, maybe the, he does go on a journey where he does have to make a decision and that one of the decision is like, do something for yourself or maybe get a tarp for the group or so, you know what I mean? Something for oh, no. his yeah. tribe. Yeah. So that's kind of like the chair. Like I considered six of pentacles to be the kind of a charity card or like a yep. giving back card. And yeah. so maybe a decision to give back and he has to maybe not choose an emotional, make an emotional decision for himself. Like he has to do something. He chooses to go with the group or for the group. Right. Yeah, I can definitely see that with the Six of um, Pentacles as well. Yep. Okay, Mr. Q, we love it. All right, oh, our right. last yeah. favorite. He was going to be <laughs> interesting. I feel like he's going to be a very interesting character. I'm, Did I'm you really. Say excited. he's your favorite, Chantal? No, no, Tiffany. I forgot about oh. Tiffany. And she's my favorite. Obviously, oh. Aquarius. Got to get oh. it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Here we go, our soul one Aquarius, right? Tiffany, 33, she's an artist. Of course she is, look at her. Uh, <laughs> from New Jersey, she's an Aquarius sun and Mercury. Sagittarius awesome. moon, we love it. <laughs> Pisces, Venus, Gemini, Mars. What a, a, what a, a balance in a group. There. All right, her and Kenzie are gonna be bop, 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 bop. <laughs> right. yeah. put that Gemini Mars <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah Gemini Mars there. and they've got a Sag rising a Sag moon they actually probably will connect really well I hope they work together especially because they are opposite too so Tiffany is a Aquarius they, she is a opposite Aquarius sun and Mercury and so mm -hmm. to, and then Kenzie has the Leo sun Mercury in yep. uh so yeah, like really good, like almost like a balance each other out. Um, 
which I mean, I think opposites attract, but sometimes they don't. They sometimes they show yeah. yourself um, something about you that you may not appreciate all the time. One hundred percent. I want them to get along because, like, I I always love my Leos, but uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it, it's it's a work in progress because they're hundred you know, percent. But there's a lot of fixed energy on this tribe. We got oh, the Scorpios, we got God. the Leo, we got the Aquarius. Ooh. I can't wait to see them at tribal. Batty, yes. They're going to be a hot mess, this uh-huh. tribe. Like, yeah. I think we – did we say the last tribe was maybe – which tribe did we say was probably going to go to tribal a lot? This one, not necessarily going to tribal a lot, but, like, just the turmoil in the tribe. <laughs> I feel like, right? It, if not going to tribal all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> this is this is maybe we need to have like an astrological council like can't we yeah. just do like a, like can i just be the person to yeah. help do the making the tribe through mm-hmm. astrological analysis that's a, should do it <laughs> so fun they, like okay the, how messy can i make they, this? yeah well yeah the fact that they don't consider it in casting blows my mind because we get Wild. something like your season which is all Virgos and Libras and then now we have like an excess of Pisces and like sc- like this tribe alone is wild it's wild I've got so many Virgos. a seven of wands for Tiffany Ooh. oh betrayal mm. hmm. um ten of cups oh okay hey. Last but not least. Oh. Uh-oh. Five of cups. Conflict. More conflict. Yeah, Emotional conflict. Emotional easy. conflict. Um, this is not an easy path. But it's it like this card. <laughs> it's like, you know, the person's looking towards the cups that are knocked over. You still have two behind you. Like, you're not out of the game when you think you're out of the game. And the sun is rising. Like, a new day is coming. And so maybe there's going to be a point where she feels like she's really like, oh, it's me. And it's not going to be her. Just once again, like, kind of like that renewal energy of like, okay. Or like, maybe you lost, she lost her closest ally. Uh-huh. Mm. This is giving me losing Kelly. <laughs> no. No. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Crying. Heartbreak. What was your card again, Sarah? Seven of Wands. Right. So maybe she does get betrayed by somebody. And so like yeah. it really maybe it is her closest ally or she thought was. And or or they take out her closest ally. And so it's a sense of betrayal, maybe a betrayal by family, or maybe Ooh. after the betrayal, she's able to find her real family in the game or find the real uh, rainbow. Um yep. after the storm, you know. Yeah, I mean, I do think of seven of wands as perseverance. It's like my deck, you like you're literally scrubbing. Oh, wands! I was thinking swords. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so like you're you're having to do the work. You're just having to like get through it. So with a five, like some sort of loss, some sort of change for her. That she's gonna have to like power through that. Yeah. Yeah. But with a ten of cups, like yeah, maybe she's able to find a new alliance, a new group. Yeah, it does seem that she's going to have to kind of battle, do some sort of battle, like go, go again. Like she's going to have some conflict um, to get to see this rainbow. But so if we're, we're saying we're her and Kenzie you. are the duo that, and Kenzie had that tower. Oh, but ten, oh she God. also oh had my. that 10 of cups. <gasps> no. So, yeah. That's the family? That's <sighs> the family. Huh? Oh my God. I need to. Uh, did you happen to write the down the what everybody got or no? You yeah, did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I think you need to share that with me because I just I need I, to actually probably see same. it. Same. <laughs> because yeah. like yeah, because Kenzie got ten of she got ten of cups too, right? Yeah. And right. oh my, interesting. So maybe the two of them have, are going to go through it, but maybe they can come maybe out they get together. separated. Yeah. You know, like there's a tribe maybe. swap or whatever, right. and. But they can come back together. And merge. I don't. Know. I yeah, just. I like both of them. I like their. No, I like. I <laughs> so I'm like, come back together. <laughs> yes. Wowzers. Y'all, Woo! that is our tribe. 
Uh, Amazing. That's our cast. Oh my gosh. I will try to put this stuff in some uh, visual formats for people so that we can kind of keep an eye as we move along here. But um, it's always exciting to just like look at it and talk about it because it plays out in in some way and then we learn and we're like oh okay now i see i'll have to reflect on that it means sorry oh go ahead no go ahead no i said i'd like you just like okay now i understand what this card means got it yeah (laughs) yeah i was gonna say i um hope i i need to reflect on my card pulls that you did for me um i'm gonna go back after this and and look at those card pulls for my season (laughs) Uh, I just looked it up and it was actually the Hierophant. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I remember us being like, oh, she's going to be like the cult leader. She's going to be like the <laughs> astrology girl, like bringing them together. <laughs> well, I think That's the Hierophant really is really, it's really fitting because I just stayed true to like that kind of like guiding compass of myself, like that, like, you know, inner philosophy, inner religion, inner ideals that, um, that I lead my life with anyways. So that was a great poll. Great poll for sure. Um, do we have any potential, like what are our winner picks after these card polls? Like, do we have any thoughts oh, based right. on the cards alone? I can't think yet. Yeah, I will say that we all felt really good about that first tribe, which was Namie Orange. Mm. Like, those yeah. are stronger cards. Super strong cards. So we like, I yeah. think <laughs> like, we're a little bit more like, okay, yeah gonna be good yeah yeah i definitely see them being a strong tribe so yeah um and yeah i can't remember but we definitely ran into some people who were like oh no your journey is challenging <laughs> yeah. but survivor's challenging kendra right it is so challenging you never know what you're gonna get oh my goodness it is such a wild ride. I'm so excited to watch this season. Um, Wednesday, how am oh, I can't even believe it. I have to like remind myself sometimes. I'm like, Kendra, you played Survivor. Cause it just seems so far away. It's something so, it's crazy that something that could take up so much of your life for so long is now just like a distant memory almost. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I had so <laughs> much fun doing this with you. I cannot wait to like touch back on these points that we oh, made today yes. and Yes. See how everything comes out with this um, fire and water heavy season. Woo! Right. Yay! Yeah. Does uh, do we get tornadoes or do we get the fire snuffed out by the water? We'll have to see how that works. Uh, yeah, this will be interesting. Kendra, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you now be a part of all of this. Uh, yeah, premiere this Wednesday, right? It's two hour premiere. Um, it will eventually become 90 minute episodes again as the season goes on. Uh, I will be back recapping weekly as well as exit interviews weekly. Um, Chantal, are you not covering the season? I'm not covering the season, but I'm thinking of doing just a little quick, maybe 10 minute reflection of like, how I feel like the cards did. I don't know. I'm just like, might do like yeah. a little, little bite after the episode, but not doing like a, you know, a standard recap or anything like that. Or I'll come so, on whenever you need me. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, always uh, coming on here, uh, but follow Reality Realness on YouTube if you haven't already, but also you'll probably be doing some stuff on your Instagram as well. So where do you want people to follow you? I will be live tweeting finally oh my god <laughs> oh my god can't wait to live tweet a season <laughs> talk my shit talk my astrology shit so yeah i'll just be i'm so excited to be making oh i can't wait to be able to comment on the show and what's happening it's so hard last season like i just want to say it <laughs> oh right yes, and also you started. have completely launched your business you are doing charts you are consulting with people so um, what's your website? Where do you want people to go? Yeah, it's called Happy to Be Here. Um, happy to, and then B is just the letter B, here.com. And I have this really, really, really fun offering that I've been doing. It's Survivor X Astrology. And mm-hmm. for people who are potentially looking to play the game or just for fun, a lot of fans have been liking to do it. 
we look at your chart and how you would play as a survivor player. So it's an mm. hour long meeting. It has literally been the joy of my life to do those readings. And it's so, so fun. Great for people who are like a little interested in astrology or who just want to hear an astrological perspective on how would they how they would play survivor. We kind of look at outwit, outlast, um, outplay and um, all the different points and you know parts of playing survivor from a survivor player and from an astrologer so that's been really yeah. fun so just want to highlight that and i have some really fun equinox um offerings coming up and i know you ladies do readings as well so just mm -hmm. shout out to all of us and what a, a libra aquarius and a sagittarius get together of course we're talking astrology like it is <laughs> so divine so fun and right. uh, such a blessing to to hang with you ladies today. Oh, yes, this was wonderful. And also thank you to everyone in the chat who joined us. Uh, we appreciate that. And if you're joining later, please leave a comment with uh, who you're excited about, what your signs are, if there's a tribe you're rooting for. Let us know all your thoughts and feelings and uh, we will see you again throughout the season. Yay. Have a wonderful day, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>